this audio recording. The book of the secrets of Enoch cannot be found in the Bible. This book is considered apocrypha. So much considered apocrypha is this particular writing that Enoch is really not found in the Bible. Enoch is barely mentioned. What we do know about Enoch is that Enoch was translated straight to heaven. Enoch was chosen. Enoch was selected by God. That higher power that we call God on this earth that truly has no name. So what is it that Enoch knows? What is the knowledge of Enoch? Let us begin with chapter 1. Chapter 1. There was a wise man, a great artificer, and the Lord conceived love for him and received him that he should behold the uppermost dwellings and be an eyewitness of the wise and great and inconceivable and immutable realm of God Almighty, of the very wonderful and glorious and bright and many-eyed station of the Lord's servants, and of the inaccessible throne of the Lord, and of the degrees of manifestations of incorporeal hosts, and of the ineffable ministration of the multitude of the elements, and of the various apparitions, and inexpressible singing of the host of the cherubim, and of the boundless light. At that time, he said, when my 165th year was completed, I beget my son, Methuselah. After this too, I lived 200 years and completed all the years of my life, 365 years. On the first day of the month, I was in my house alone and was resting on my couch and slept. And when I was asleep, great distress came up into my heart. I was weeping with my eyes in sleep, and I could not understand what this distress was or what would happen to me. And there appeared to me Two men, exceeding big, so that I never saw such on earth. Their faces were shining like the sun. Their eyes, too, were like a burning light. And from their lips was fire coming forth with clothing and singing of various kinds, in appearance purple. Their wings were brighter than gold their hands whiter than snow. They were standing at the head of my couch and began to call me by my name. And I arose from my sleep and saw clearly those two men standing in front of me. And I saluted them and was seized with fear. And the appearance of my face was changed from terror and those men said to me, Have courage, Enoch, do not fear. The eternal God has sent us to thee, and lo, thou shalt today ascend with us into heaven, and thou shalt tell thy sons and all thy household all that they should do without thee on earth in thy house. And let no one seek thee, till the Lord return thee to them. 
And I made haste to obey them and went out from my house and made to the doors as it was ordered to me and summoned my sons, Methuselah and Rigim and Giadad and made known to them all the marvels those men had told me. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 The Book of the Secrets of Enoch Listen to me, my children. I know not whither I go or what will befall me. Now, therefore, my children, I tell you, turn not from God before the face of the vain who made not heaven and earth, for these shall perish and those who worship them. And may the Lord make confident your hearts in the fear of him. And now, my children, let no one think to seek me until the Lord return me to you. End of chapter 2. Chapter 3. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him on to their wings and bore him up on to the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether. And they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. End of chapter 3. Chapter 4. They brought before my face the elders and rulers of the stellar orders and showed me 200 angels who rule the stars and their services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come round all those who sail. Chapter 5 And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of the snow and the angels who keep their terrible storehouses and the clouds whence they come out and into which they go. Chapter 6 they showed me the treasure house of the dew, like oil of the olive, and the appearance of its form, as of all the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things, and how they are made to shut and open. Chapter 7 And those men took me and led me up, on to the second heaven and showed me darkness greater than earthly darkness. And there I saw prisoners hanging, watched, awaiting the great and boundless judgment. And these angels were dark looking, more than earthly darkness, and incessantly making weeping through all hours. And I said to the men that were with me, Wherefore are these incessantly tortured? They answered me, These are God's apostates who obeyed not God's commands, but took counsel with their own will and turned away with their prince, who also is fastened on the fifth heaven. And I felt great pity for them. And they saluted me and said to me, Man of God, pray for us to the Lord. And I answered to them, Who am I? A mortal man, that I should pray for angels? Who knoweth whither I go? Or what will befall me? Or who will pray for me? Chapter 8 and those men took me thence and led me up on to the third heaven and placed me there. 
and I looked downwards and saw the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all these sweet flowering trees and behold their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods born by them bubbling with fragrant exaltation. And in the midst of the trees, that of life, in that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance, and adorn more than every existing thing. And on all sides, it is in form, gold looking and vermilion and fire like and covers all. And it has produce from all fruits. Its root is in the garden and the earth's end. And paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine. And they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree, and every place is blessed. And there are three hundred angels, very bright, who keep the garden, and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices, serving the Lord throughout all days and hours. And I said, how very sweet is this place. And those men said to me, chapter nine, this place, O Enoch, is prepared for the righteous who endure all manner of offense from those that exasperate their souls, who avert their eyes from iniquity, and make righteous judgment and give bread to the hungry and cover the naked with clothing and raise up the fallen and help the injured orphans and who walk without fault before the face of the Lord and serve him alone. And for them is prepared this place for eternal inheritance. Chapter 10. And those two men led me upon to the northern side and showed me there a very terrible place. And there were all manner of tortures in that place, cruel darkness and unillumined gloom. And there is no light there. But murky fire constantly flameth aloft. And there is a fiery river coming forth. And that whole place is everywhere fire. And everywhere there is frost and ice, thirst and shivering, while the bonds are very cruel. And the angels fearful and merciless, bearing angry weapons, merciless torture. And I said, whoa, whoa, 
How very terrible is this place. And those men said to me, This place, O oh Enoch, is prepared for those who dishonor God, who on earth practice sin against nature, which is child corruption. After the sodomitic fashion, magic making, enchantments, and devilish witchcrafts, and who boast of their wicked deeds, stealing lies, calumnies, envy, rancor, fornication, murder, and who, accursed, steal the souls of men, who seeing the poor take away their goods, and themselves wax rich, injuring them for other men's goods, who being able to satisfy the empty, made the hungering to die, being able to clothe, stripped the naked, and who knew not their creator, and bowed down to the soulless gods, who cannot see nor hear vain gods, who also built humes, images, and bowed down to unclean handiwork, for all these is prepared this place amongst these for eternal inheritance. Chapter 11. Those men took me and led me up on to the fourth heaven and showed me all the successive goings and all the rays of light of the sun and moon. And I measured their goings and compared their light and saw that the sun's light is greater than the moon's. Its circle and the wheels on which it goes always like a wind going past with very marvelous speed. And day and night it has no rest. Its passage and return are accompanied by four great stars, and each star has under it a thousand stars to the right of the sun's wheel, and by four to the left, each having under it a thousand stars, altogether eight thousand, issuing with the sun continually. And by day, 15 myriads of angels attended. And by night, a thousand. And six winged ones issue with the angels before the sun's wheel into the fiery flames. And a hundred angels kindle the sun and set it alight. Chapter 12. And I looked and saw other flying elements of the sun, whose names are Phoenix and Kalkidri, marvelous and wonderful, with feet and tails in the form of a lion and a crocodile's head. Their appearance is empurpled, like the rainbow. Their size is 900 measures. Their wings are like those of angels. Each has twelve, and they attend and accompany the sun bearing heat and dew as it is ordered them from God. Thus the sun revolves and goes and rises under the heaven, and its course goes under the earth with the light of his rays incessantly. Chapter 13 Those men bore me away to the east and placed me at the sun's gate where the sun goes forth according to the regulation of the seasons and the circuit of the months of the whole year and the number of the hours 
day and night. And I saw six gates open, each gate having 61 stadium and a quarter of one stadium. And I measured them truly and understood their size to be so much through which the sun goes forth and goes to the west and is even made and rises throughout all the months and turns back again from the six gates according to the succession of the seasons. Thus, the period of the whole year is finished after the returns of the four seasons. Chapter 14. And again, those men led me away to the western parts and showed me six great gates, open, corresponding to the eastern gates, opposite to where the sun sets, according to the number of the days, 365 and a quarter. Thus, again, it goes down to the western gates and draws away its light, the greatness of its brightness under the earth. For since the crown of its shining is in heaven with the Lord and guarded, by 400 angels, while the sun goes round on wheel under the earth and stands seven great hours in night and spins half its course under the earth. When it comes to the eastern approach in the eighth hour of the night, it brings its lights and the crown of its shining and the sun flames forth more than fire. Chapter 15. Then the elements of the sun, called Phoenix and Chalkidri, broke into song. Therefore, every bird flutters with its wings, rejoicing at the giver of light, and they broke into song at the command of the Lord. The giver of light comes to bring brightness to the whole world. And the morning guard takes shape, which is the rays of the sun. And the sun of the earth goes out and receives its brightness to light up the whole face of the earth. And they showed me this calculation of the sun's going. And the gates which it enters, these are the great gates of the computation of the hours of the year. For this reason, the sun is a great creation whose circuit lasts 28 years and begins again from the beginning. Chapter 16. Those men showed me the other course, that of the moon, 12 great gates crowned from the west to the east by which the moon goes in and out of the customary times. It goes in at the first gate to the western places of the sun. By the first gates with 31 days exactly. By the second gates with 31 days exactly. By the third with 30 days exactly. By the fourth with 30 days exactly by the fifth with 31 days exactly by the sixth with 31 days exactly by the seventh with 30 days exactly by the eighth with 31 days perfectly by the ninth, with 31 days, exactly. By the 10th, with 30 days, perfectly. By the 11th, with 31 days, exactly. By the 12th, with 28 days, 
Exactly. And it goes through the western gates in the order and number of the eastern and accomplishes the 365 days and a quarter days of the solar year. While the lunar year has 354 and there are wanting it to 12 days of the solar circle, which are the lunar apex of the whole year. Thus too, the great circle contains 532 years. The quarter of a day is omitted for three years. The fourth fulfills it exactly. Therefore, they are taken outside of heaven for three years and are not added to the number of days because they change the time of the years to two new months towards completion to two other towards diminution. And when the western gates are finished, it returns and goes to the eastern to the lights and goes thus day and night about the heavenly circles, lower than all circles, swifter than the heavenly winds and sprints and elements and angels flying. Each angel has six wings. It has sevenfold course in 19 years. Chapter 17. In the midst of the heavens, I saw armed soldiers serving the Lord with timpana and organs and incessant voice with sweet voice, with sweet and incessant voice and various singing, which it is impossible to describe and which astonishes every mind. So wonderful and marvelous is this singing of those angels. And I was delighted listening to it. Chapter 18. The men took me on to the fifth heaven and placed me. And there I saw many and countless soldiers called Grigori of human appearance and their size was greater than that of great giants, and their faces were withered, and the silence of their mouths perpetual, and there was no service on the fifth heaven. And I said to the men who were with me, Wherefore are these very withered, and their faces melancholy, and their mouths silent, and wherefore is there no service on this heaven? And they said to me, These are the Gregory, who are with their prince, Satanel, rejected the Lord of light. And after them are those who held in great darkness on the second heaven, and three of them went down onto earth from the Lord's throne to the place Irmon and broke through their vows on the shoulders of the heel of Irmon, and saw the daughters of men how good they are, and befouled the earth with their deeds, who in all times of their age made lawlessness and mixing, and giants are born, and marvelous big men, and great enmity. And therefore God judged them with great judgment, and they wept for their brethren, and they will be punished on the Lord's great day. And I said to the Gregory, I saw your brethren and their works and their great torments, and I prayed for them. But the Lord has condemned them to be under earth till heaven and earth shall end forever. And I said, Wherefore do you wait, brethren, and do not serve before the Lord's face and have not put your services before the Lord's face, lest you anger your Lord utterly. And they listened to my admonition and spoke to the four ranks in heaven. And lo, 
as I stood with those two men, four trumpets trumpeted together with a great voice. And the Gregory broke into song with one voice, and their voice went up before the Lord pitifully and affectingly. Chapter 19. And thence those men took me and bore me up to the sixth heaven. And there I saw seven bands of angels, very bright and glorious, and their faces shining more than the sun shining, glistening, and there is no difference in their faces or behavior or manner of dress. And these make the orders and learn the goings of the stars and the alteration of the moon or revolution of the sun and the good government of the world. And when they saw evil doing, they make commandments and instructions and sweet and loud singing and all song of praise. These are the archangels who are above angels, measure all life in heaven and on earth. And the angels who are appointed over seasons and years. The angels who are over rivers and seas. And who are over the fruits of the earth. And the angels who are over every grass. Giving food to all. To every living thing. And the angels who write all these souls of men. And all their deeds and their lives before the Lord's face. In their midst are six phoenixes and six cherubim and six winged ones continually with one voice singing one voice. And it is not possible to describe their singing and their rejoicing before the Lord at his footstool. Chapter 20. And those two men lifted me up thence on to the seventh heaven. And I saw there a very great light and fiery troops of great archangels, incorporeal forces, and dominions, orders, and governments, cherubim and seraphim, thrones and many-eyed ones, nine regiments, the loaned stations of light. And I became afraid and began to tremble with great terror. And those men took me and led me after them and said to me, Have courage, Enoch, do not fear. And showed me the Lord from afar sitting on his very high throne. For what is there on the tenth heaven, since the Lord dwells here? On the tenth heaven is God. In the Hebrew tongue, he is called Akrivat. And all the heavenly troops would come and stand on the ten steps according to their rank and would bow down to the Lord and again go to their places in joy and felicity, singing songs in the boundless light with small and tender voices, gloriously serving him. You have just listened to the first 20 chapters of the secret book of Enoch. There are many, many more chapters in this book, and I will read out those chapters to you. God has a word for you. And men on this earth have attempted to bury the word of God. But God did speak through Jesus Christ and say that there shall be a day that my word will be uncovered and there will be a select few to receive this word. Now you are part of of that select few. What will you do with this knowledge that you have just 
acquired? Will you go over it just once? Or will you take the time to study it? Go over it and embrace the word of God because God has a word for you. Keep your faith, be blessed, and stay phenomenal. And remember, plan strategically for your life or life will strategically plan for you. Amen.